I think I became a carpenter. Right now, I should be a qualified carpenter because I don't know. I can I can fix my own things. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking today's video. If you're new to my channel, you're most welcome. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And yeah, join the family. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, the things that I had to adapt to once I had to move to Germany. Okay. Number one, the dressing. Ah. Uh, you know you have to dress according to the seasons like winter spring summer autumn the different seasons have different temperatures and the weather of course you understand so like every other time you have to shift your clothes because the clothes that you wear in summer you might never wear it again after next year like we are in summer right now so the summer clothes that i'm wearing right now i might never it, once summer is over I just have to wait up until next year during summer or spring when the temperatures are a little bit hot that's when I'll be able to wear my summer outfits <laughs> but up until then I have to switch it up and just wear the winter clothes you know back home you just used to dress like for the the weather is not that cold and is not that hot. I miss the weather back home sometimes. Not sometimes, especially when it's winter time here. Hmm. You and your jacket for six months. Wow. Sometimes you walk outside during winter and your hands are actually freezing. <laughs> what? Guys? You have to grab yourself at least two to three layers you know you first wear your t-shirt or whatever it is t-shirts and jeans right you follow it up with your hoodie after the hoodie you follow it up with a, a very 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 thick jacket a thick one you go outside there eh? outside is cold and then maybe you enter inside like a, a mall or something or a shop you enter inside it's hot you have to remove your jacket Hey, Godo. What? Hey, winter. Don't play with winter. This is people love summer because summer the temperatures are hot and you dress up. Yeah, so that's it. Number two is the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket in in Kenya, let's say in Tuskies, I remember if you go to the supermarket, there's a person. When, when, when you're going to the cashier's place, eh? there's a person who is going to pack the stuff for you and give it to you after you pay, right? But here, my dear, you have to carry, you have to carry your own bag or, or paper bag from home and come. And when the cashier is, you know, tip tip tip, Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. I mean, very fast. Yeah, they're always very fast. Just like, hello, hello. Tip, 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 tip. 10 euro, non sponsors but you give them money. As you're packing, eh? They don't even want. Yeah, chop, chop. You pack your own goods, okay? And they go, yeah. And you buy the bag. Did we used to buy the bag in the supermarket back in Kenya? I don't think so. Did we? Those paper bags. Mm. Those are the written taskies. Nah, you don't buy. So if you're traveling and then you're, on a, you're waiting for someone to pack the stuff for you. <laughs> Shock on you, my dear. <clears throat> Number three. Keeping time. You know African timers. And you come here and you're like, what what you cannot even be a minute late like i remember when i was working and i was like why i cannot you cannot if you're supposed to be at work by 6 30 please be there by 6 30 otherwise you're going to have a feeling that titan which is not a good thing if you have an appointment or something you have to be there if they see the 
seven. Please be there at seven. Not seven or one. Not seven or two. Because you go there at seven and you find for everybody. I used to go there exactly at six thirty, and I find everybody already seated. Some people. Some people are already seated there, which means they came ten minutes earlier or twenty. I don't know, but they're very, <laughs> they're very punctual. <laughs> No, I'm an African timer, but I just have to go with being punctual because that's the way of life here. You have to be punctual. The next thing is um, appointments. I cannot just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to the doctor, okay? I cannot just say like, I'm going to the doctor, like just right now I have to go to the doctor because I'm sick. No, it does not work like that, baby. You have to call the doctor's office, okay, and make an appointment. You just don't rush out of your house and go to the doctor and you feel like they're going to treat you because, because why? No, you have to book an appointment. So unless it's an emergency, maybe they're going to rush you to, to the hospital. But normally you have to go to the doctor's place and make an appointment. So anything is appointment. Most of the things is just they deal with appointment and time. The next thing, you know, in, in Kenya we have a postal address. Okay, we have a postal address. Sometimes maybe they send uh, these bills to the postal address, but it's not at your doorstep right it's at the postal office that's where you have your post box but here the postal address your address box i don't know your letter box or address box whichever it's at your door where you live so when you're coming outside that your address box is there is right there so you will be receiving lots, lo lots and lots of, of letters. <laughs> hey, you you go like you visit your friend in another town, and then you come back, and maybe they send you a letter, and you were supposed to do something, and you never did it. My dear, you're in trouble. Eh? Maybe they gave you a time limit to do to do it, and you missed out. On, on the letter because you had traveled. Ah, uh -uh. you're in trouble. <laughs> every time, just, I just, every time I come to back home, I just have to check my mail, my mailbox or address box or letter box, whichever. You have to check it because you might be having a very important letter right there and you forgot about it and you'll be in trouble. The next thing, I think is number five, right? Is moving out. Like, you just cannot wake up one morning and see you moving to a new house. No, there's protocol, my dear. You know where you live, there's like, maybe back home and can you have those chiefs, you know, the places where you go to register. The registry whatever so the registry here you have to go to, if you're living in that town you have to go back there so that they can give you something like a bishtetic room is it a bishiny room or bishtetic room something that shows that you is not a resident of the town anymore you are moving out and if you're moving out once you move and you go to the next place you're going you also have to go and register yourself so that they know yes there's somebody new who's living at this particular place and you need your address and your name on the address so in any case you just don't move anyhow because they have to keep track of where exactly you're moving and who is moving in with you they have to know all that all those details and how big is your house? Uh, you know, you cannot just say like, I am going to live with my friend together. We've decided to live together. You have to register your friend. 
and if in any case you, you, you you're living in a single room and you brought your friend with you you can't do that the room is not enough for you and your friend you just cannot move switch houses anyhow you want because number one finding a house is very difficult difficult if i say difficult i mean difficult <laughs> you know if you're living like in München, even in Stuttgart, finding a house, eh? No, 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 no. It's too, it's too difficult. At home in Kenya, we just, if you want to move and you found a house somewhere, you just pack your things and go. Nobody will ask you. You know, you don't have to go and register yourself as a chief and say, oh yeah, I, I just moved here. No, you don't have to do any of that. But here, you have to do that. Next, we have having to assemble your own furniture and screw it or do all the screwing and everything i think i became a carpenter right now i should be a qualified carpenter because i don't know i can i can fix my own things like here nobody is going to fix it for you because the carpenter is not there if you once you order something you see like a very very nice looking chest of drawers or a table for your living room once you order it my friend they're going to bring you like pieces pieces of the pieces of the table okay so you're the one who has to bring the pieces together and screw the table up and fix it yourself unless you you can have someone who knows how to do it to come and do it for you or rather if you ordered it from a certain company and the company offers uh, you know the services to their customers that they can make after they have delivered you have to pay extra for them to fix the, the thing for you number seven separating trash so here we have this kind of like you have to separate trash the the plastics and the organic waste and the cartons maybe and the glass you have all like the yellow sack and the whatever you know you have to separate the the trash you do you just don't put everything together and i find like that's that's a very nice thing to do because we have to protect our environment anyways you know like you have to separate the plastics from the organic material so that's something to appreciate what's the thing i have here oh yeah driving do you know how much driving costs in germany what you'd be shocked driving in canada costs i think like ten thousand shillings or twenty thousand shillings when i used to be back home it used to cost around that like the aa driving or yeah, it, it's not more than 20,000 shillings unless it changed, I don't know. But seriously, and you drive for like three three months? Three months? Yeah, you just don't take long. You know, you learn, you, you learn the driving and then you just start driving. Here, driving. Hmm, my goodness. You would drive like, you have to do the theory part. And do the practical bit and do you know how much this thing costs it will cost you almost 300,000 shillings and if, if in any case you fail the driving your money is gone just like that yeah. you have to redo it again <laughs> you have to redo it again I mean the rules on driving in this country the rules are very strict and when I say strict, I mean strict driving rules. Buying yourself the car is expensive and maintaining the car is expensive because you have to pay for the tax. Because you're driving, you need to pay tax. Do we pay tax in Kenya for driving? I don't think so. Can you imagine you have to fuel your car and every month you have to pay the tax for the car? After you did your driving, and paid lots of money though if you found breaking the rules 
and they take your, your license away. They give you, I think, like three warnings. If you break the rules like three times, you are never going to drive in Germany ever again. Okay? That's it. Well, I find the rules of the driving not extreme, but they're, they're just cautious measures to ensure that there are no accidents, which is a good thing. You know, if like the, the street light is green, yeah, the pedestrian is supposed to cross the road and there's no pedestrian at that particular point, but the driver, someone is, is driving through, they, ha they still have to stop and wait for the green light. They cannot go <laughs> because once they go, the camera is just going to flash the car and the police is going to come for them. Mm -hmm. So you don't do that. Okay, you observe the traffic rules. They observe traffic rules like that. I give them a tick for that. But if you come to Nairobi, yeah, yeah. the way my tattoos are driving left and right, eh? if you can drive in Nairobi, and you're you're a good driver like you can drive and one more thing there are no bumps on the road there are actually no bumps like we we have bumps on the road in kenya but here there's no bumps the road is just going like straight no bumps the next thing is the oh i talked about uh the dressing let me just go back to the dressing one more time a little bit i remember we used to go uh, to party during winter and <laughs> now once you go to the club and you know once you enter the club it's very hot eh? so you have to remove it you have to remove your jacket and there's a place where you put your jacket and maybe you pay like one euro so they can keep your jacket for the night and then you'll be going inside to while well, you're free huh? I mean party during winter is so difficult you don't have to go to the party but hey once you come out there it's cold it's really cold and you can't even dress like you know like the way back home in Africa people really dress up when they're going to parties eh? heels try wearing heels during winter Mm -hmm. You want to freeze to death. You cannot wear open things like and you're going to party during winter. I'm so used to wearing sneakers, something that I never used to wear that much. It's not like I was a fan of wearing heels, but if you're the kind of person who loves to wear heels, you have to ditch them immediately. Because when you come here, no heels, like, it's very rare for you to see people wearing heels, like, it's just, unless they're going to a function and they're using their own cart or taking an Uber or a taxi. But uh, heels, my friend, you'll be walking down the street and you're the only one with heels. They also have this thing, like, they, they don't want you to, to throw plastic, okay, in the trash. So you can recycle the plastic and get yourself some... Some money out of it let me show you guys you see like this bottle this bottle has this thing it's it's written what's up my shirt what's up you want a cup okay so it's written like uh i'm the fund if you see if if a bottle has this most bottles have this especially the ones you buy like Color and sprites, water, or any drinks. They have this. If if they have this, then when you go to the supermarket, there's a place. There's a machine. You just drop this inside, and you're going to get. You see, it's written twenty-five cents. So you're going to get twenty-five cents. If you have like a car, maybe you can put all your bottles. And when you go there, you can get maybe like, you need at least maybe 20 bottles for you to get something like 20 euros out of it. But this is actually something cool because you don't get to throw trash or you don't get to throw plastic away and, you know, destroy the environment. Rather, you can make something out of it. 
So they gave you, you get 25 cents out of it so that you don't throw the bottles away. I find that idea a very, very nice, nice one, honestly. So that sums up the end of my video today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're watching my video and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. If it's free, subscribe to my channel, okay? Yeah, and I'm so grateful to those people who watch my video, by the way. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section down below. Yeah, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!